Hi guys, Cabal with TGN, and welcome to part two of my macro guide. In this video, we're going to continue with our macro tutorial, and we'll be covering four new topics. Let's go ahead and start at the very top. One highly annoying problem that bugs a lot of players is the constant error messages and sounds that sometimes occur when you try to use a special ability. Let's go ahead and talk about a solution to this problem. The obliterate macro that we wrote in the last video on the screen right now, we tested it out and it worked fine. So we're going to do one more test and see if we get the error messages when we try to use it. So let me get in close to this mob and I'm going to start spamming it. Uh oh, you could hear the you could hear the death knight say it's too far away and we can also see the message the error message reading you are too far away so we definitely need to fix that okay so we are going to modify our existing obliterate macro so that we no longer see the error messages or hear the error sounds you can see the modified macro on the screen right now this is going to take just a little bit of explanation now at a very high level this macro is turning the sound effects off, casting obliterate, wiping all the error messages off the screen, and then restoring the, the sound effects setting to its previous value. Okay, so if you notice, all we've really done here is we are wrapping our old macro with four lines of code. Okay, so let's go ahead and update our macro. Select all and I'm pasting the new macro in. Let's save it. And now we're going to go ahead and test it to see if we have the error message problem. So let's target him, start spamming obliterate. As you can see, no sound effect, no message. Okay, you should be able to see on the screen right now that four lines of code in our obliterate macro are highlighted. If you want to solve this problem in all of your other macros, then you need to wrap the code in those macros with these four lines of code. So if you want to suppress error messages in your other macros, all you need to do is copy them and then paste them into the code region that says, your code goes here. You should be able to see it on the screen right now. And then you should be good to go. One of the problems with writing macros in World of Warcraft is that the the stock macro editor has a 255 character limit so it really prevents you from making very large macros. Our obliterate macro that we just wrote is 215 characters and it's it's not even a big macro so we really need to find a way to make the the character limit higher. Fortunately for us there is a solution. There's a macro, I'm sorry, there's an add-on called Super Duper Macro, which you can find the link to it in the description section of this video, and it's a wonderful add-on. It, it, uh, it solves the problem of not being able to create large macros, and it does a lot of other things too. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the UI for Super Duper Macro. Click this button right here, and as you can see, we have the macros on the left-hand side and the macro text here in this text section. So this particular macro is definitely greater than 255 characters. So it's a pretty nice add-on. As a matter of fact, if you want to see a, a very large macro, you can see one right now on the screen. This is a macro for my mage, and it does like 14 different things. So I, I definitely recommend checking out Super Duper Macro. Okay, let's now move on to a discussion about the cast sequence command. Cast sequence allows you to perform a sequence of abilities. For example, if you're a mage, you can make a macro that uses cast sequence to cast Molten Armor and then Arcane Brilliance on yourself in that order. The syntax for cast sequence is actually pretty straightforward. As you can see on the screen right now, I have a table that describes the various parameters. I'll give you just a moment to look that over. Okay, so let's walk through a very 
basic example of a cast sequence macro. Let me pull up the macro editor. Looks like I do not have a free macro. Dang it. Let me see if I have one over here. Okay, there's some there's an empty spot there. So click new. And we're going to name it test. And on the first line, we're going to type show tooltip. On the next line, we're going to type slash cast sequence. And we want the macro to cast Delarin Brilliance first and Molten Armor second. So we need to type that very quickly. Okay, let's save the macro. And we're going to drag it to our action bar. Actually, let's drag it over here. And we're going to test it right now. Okay, Delarin Brilliance, Molten Armor and see that it reset back to Delarin Brilliance. All right, now let's extend this macro and have it start off by casting Ice Barrier, followed by Delarin Brilliance, and then followed by Molten Armor. So we're gonna save that and test it. Ice Barrier, Delarin Brilliance, and Molten Armor. Should reset to Ice Barrier. Okay, it's important to understand that the default behavior of cast sequence is that as soon as it gets done casting the last spell in the list, it'll reset. So as soon as we cast Molten Armor, it'll reset back to Delarin Brilliance, and we saw this in our example. Cast sequence does let you control how, how to reset. Let's, let's walk through a very quick example. Let's say that we want we want this macro to cast Ice Barrier, followed by Delarin Brilliance, and then followed by Molten Armor. But we want, we want the macro to reset back to Ice Barrier after three seconds. So we're going to provide the reset equals, I think I just said five, let's make it five seconds, five. So that reset equals five means reset the sequence after five seconds. So let's save that and we're going to test it. Ice Barrier, Delarin Brilliance, and that should change in just a second. Yeah, it changed on its own. Okay, let's have a look at the table again. As you can see from this table, it describes each of the parameters and what they do and it gives examples of how to use them. If you find that this table is not giving you all the information you need and you have other questions, I recommend looking at the link in the description section. Now while we're talking about cast sequence, it's, I think it's important to cover cast random. There's another command called cast random, which behaves similarly to cast sequence, except that it randomly chooses a spell in the list instead of doing it sequentially. I have a mount macro in fact, that randomly chooses a different mount from a very large list. You can see the macro on the screen right now. Let's go ahead and do some tests. So let me cast it now. Okay, Vitry Stone Drake. Uh, try it again. Albino Drake. Again. Albino Drake. It is random. And Rusted Proto Drake. Now the other, the other awesome thing about this macro is that it checks to see if you are in a flyable zone and it chooses flyable mounts and it also checks to see if you were in a non flyable I'm uh, sorry non flyable zone in which case it only randomly chooses from a list of ground mounts so it's a pretty cool macro okay let's move on to the final topic in this video using the focus target feature the focus target feature allows you to track a particular target and give it its own unit frame. So for example, let me set focus to myself. Target, I just targeted myself and then type slash focus. Okay, there is the, I'm not sure if it's called a unit frame or a nameplate. Okay, so we're going to unlock the frame and move it over here like this. It also allows you to clear the focus. So if we type slash clear focus, then we clear it. 
the best thing about this feature is that you can programmatically perform tasks on the focus target without having to change your current target. I leverage this feature all the time when I heal. For example, on my Resto Shaman, I use the following macro to target whatever has the focus frame, which is almost always my tank. And here is another very useful macro that I use on my Shaman. It casts Earth Shield on the focus target, so it just makes it really easy to you know, uh, buff your tank with Earth Shield without having to change the target. And that wraps up this video. If you have any questions or if you need me to elaborate on anything that I've said in this video, just leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks for watching.